Enable. Hello and welcome to another episode of NSC Finvis Season 6 powered by CNBC TV 18. I'm your host Gautam Srinivasan and we are here as always to help you understand the concepts behind personal finance and wealth creation. Our next pit stop is in Navi Mumbai at the development center of one of the leading global insurance technology providers, Majesco. So let's take a look. With an experience of over two decades, Majesco is a provider of core insurance platform software and consulting services to insurance carriers worldwide. The company delivers digital insurance software to enable business models through policy, billing, claims, distribution management, data and analytics, as well as digital solutions. The key strength of the company is its experience and expertise in executing complex digital transformation and mission-critical programs for insurance companies all over the globe. Today, NSC Finviz with its theme, Invest in Yourself, Your Path to Prosperity, engage with the employees of Majisco in Navi Mumbai to understand their notions on financial planning and educate them to plan their finances better. You know, the millenniums are kind of uh, fraught with a lot of uh, information and uh, I think uh, uh, what they need is, is a sense of guidance uh, from the right market experts to help them in managing their finances and their investments. For me, financial literacy would be uh, being aware of the financial instruments that we have in the market today and second most important thing would be that how to use it, uh, we all should be aware. Financial literacy means an education or understanding about the personal finance. So uh, it, it includes the multiplication of money, uh, how we invest that money and how we manage that wealth according to us. This session might be a milestone in my uh, financial uh, goals or maybe uh, I would get very good uh, information about where to invest and where to not invest. Welcome to NSC Finwiz Season 6, powered by CNBC TV 18. We are at the development center of Majesco and the employees here are very eager to ask a lot of questions they would have on the concepts of financial planning and wealth creation. And we have with us two financial planning experts who are ready to answer them, Hemant Rustagi and Pankaj Matpal. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us and thank you to the audience here. I'm sure we'll have a very interesting exchange of ideas. Our theme for this year has been investing in yourself, your path to prosperity. So let's kick off the discussion on that uh, note. Investing takes, uh, used to take a very strong heart when people used to invest directly in equities, in the sense that directly in stocks. But to a certain extent, mutual funds have taken care of that worry and maybe improved risk appetite. What's your thought about this? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, when we talk about mutual funds, it's an interesting vehicle. It allows you to invest in different asset classes. Uh, irrespective of whatever your risk profile may be, hmm. irrespective of whatever your time horizon may be. Hmm. You know, the important is that how much money you invest into different asset classes, even if you have decided how much will go into equity debt and all, I think the important thing is, are you investing in the right investment vehicle to get the best out of that asset class? Hmm. And this is where I think mutual funds really score over uh, others. Pankaj, let's extend that point. The habit is always comparing an investment product with an FD. You look at the, the rate of return of an FD and you keep measuring you know, the rate of return of whatever investment product you have looked at. And mutual funds, well, it's not, it's not always an upward journey. You do have corrections in the meanwhile. So what word of advice would you give to the folks here who are invested in mutual funds? In mutual funds, when you invest, it may happen that if you invested for five years, three years, you are observing negative returns. Mm -hmm. And in the last two years, the returns are so high that average of five years is much more than a fixed deposit. So here, when you invest, though we have different kinds of schemes, right from liquid fund to uh, diversified equity funds, but if I talk about equity funds also, because usually uh, investors, they go for equity fund for long term, there what happens because of volatility, when the markets are down, they start uh, assuming that if the returns are not good, it means that why should I stay invested there? Mm. I will get this kind of returns only. If you stay invested, if the scheme is good, 
its portfolio is good then definitely if your horizon is 5 year and above mm. you will average returns what you will get will be better than your fixed deposit all right and looking at the performance of funds when it comes to beating the market uh, index funds are gaining in popularity so there is always this debate of active versus you know passively managed funds so what would you say to the folks here who who say i agree with your point of long term prospects of the indian economy looking good at least for few years i feel that the actively managed funds will continue to do well mm. one second is you don't have much exposure in small and mid cap through the index fund and an etf so if you want to build a portfolio healthy portfolio where you have right amount of the exposure to three uh, different segments of the market you have to have i am not saying that you should not have an index fund or etf of mm. course there is a place for these funds in the portfolio but it can't be driven by only what has happened in the last 12 months or 15 months so you need to create a very balanced portfolio make sure that 30 40% of your money is in mid cap and small cap mm. and that can be only through the actively managed fund and within a large cap too i think you can have a mix of etf index fund and actively managed funds so when it comes to financial planners using financial planners for investments now we have got uh, you know regular plans versus direct plans where direct plans do offer you the option of you know uh, n- not paying commission what are some of the do's and don'ts people should look at when it comes to you know deciding whether to go for a for a regular option or a direct plan option now two options are available definitely and uh, the cost in direct plan is lesser that is the only advantage because portfolio is same the performance will be same only thing because there is a lesser cost and that is why mm. your returns in your hands are little better than your regular plan if you are really means uh, market savvy you understand how to select the funds you can take your own decision but in most of cases i have found that uh, if you go through the financial planner uh, it will be better second thing counseling see what happens when market comes down that time i have seen the most of investor who have invested in direct schemes they are the investor who <laughs> discontinue your their sip they uh, start redeeming their schemes but if you have financial advisor you talk to him financial advisor try to explain that why you should stay invested for long term your financial advisor knows that how to select the funds based on your objective of investment risk appetite and also that uh, the risk in the fund uh, on that note we'll take a very short break stay tuned we'll be right back Welcome back to NSC Finvis Season Six, powered by CNBC TV18. In the first segment, we discussed broadly about investing in yourself, your path to prosperity. In this segment, we will be talking more specifically about how to create a lucrative portfolio. Question: Many in the audience would like to have uh, answers from from our experts. So. uh let's take a deep dive on this topic creating a lucrative portfolio what are the elements involved in creating the right portfolio for the right kind of needs that one would have when you talk about lucrative portfolio is the one basically which helps you achieve all your investment goals and i believe that you know whatever your goals may be uh, your portfolio mix should reflect your intent to mm. achieve those you need to define your goals you need to be very clear as to what you want to do with your money mm. okay so a part of it where you want to create wealth has to be give, invested in the right asset class mm. that's where we say that invest in uh, equity investing in equity again i think you need to choose the right investment vehicle you are there are two ways you can do it either you can go directly into equity or you can do it through mutual funds okay and if you are not comfortable with you know stock picking ability of yours or how to monitor your portfolio i think the best thing is give it to mutual fund fund manager who will do it for you so mm. i think it's very important one to look level of diversification make sure that you are investing in an investment vehicle which gives you tax efficient return mm. because at the end of the day what matters is what you get what you get to keep and not what you earn all right expand on the parameters of choosing a fund a good fund because a lot of the folks here if they are planning to invest directly in a fund they would have that question whether this fund is right for me or not if you choose equity even if you talk about the equity in equity also we have to see uh whether large cap mid cap small cap because different kind of schemes are there now based on your objective investment time horizon because large cap schemes will be more stable compared to your small cap now in last one year if you see the returns small cap mid cap have shown much uh means more negative returns compared to large cap even but it does not mean that you should not have small cap or mid cap in your portfolio 
only you have to see when you have small cap, your time horizon should be really longer. Mm. So that you have to decide first that what is the objective, how, how much time you have uh, to invest in those schemes. Now coming with the category, if you are going for large cap, then which large cap fund is suitable for you? Consistency is the important thing. The scheme which is giving sometimes very high returns, sometimes very low returns, but there's a scheme which is uh, performing consistently, that is important. Second thing with the returns, you have to see where the returns are coming from. Mm. That is important because if there's a risk to generate returns, fund manager has to decide that how much risk to be taken, what kind of uh, portfolio they have to build. If the extra returns are coming because of extra risk taken in the portfolio, see if to generate some extra risk returns, risk is also minimum extra, that is a different thing. But sometime to generate alpha, if there is a very high risk mm. or uh, different kind of uh, stocks in the portfolio, it means you have to see that also. So there are some risk parameter like beta, standard deviation, sharp ratio, trainer ratio. These are the things which you have to see when you see the performance as well. All right. And uh, Hemant, how often should one go for a portfolio rebalancing? Because we have to address that question of the waiting period. While some might wait it out, some might think that, you know, I waited two or three years. This fund has not done well as per my expectation. I think you need to have a strategy in place for buying as well as selling. Mm. Rebalancing does that for you. Okay. How it does this, you are following a discipline of rebalancing portfolio, let's say one, once in a year. Maybe at the beginning of a calendar year or a financial year. So what it does is, it converts your gains into long-term capital gain. It ensures that you're not paying any exit load, right? And you remain invested in asset classes. Second thing, if I'm investing for a long-term goal, let's say for my retirement, which is let's say 20 years away, I don't think there is a need for you to rebalance that. Mm. Because you want to accumulate as much as you still have time on hand. Where do you need to rebalance? Where your goal time horizon is approaching. And I think... Many investors find it very tricky and difficult to do this. So that's where I always strongly believe that you go into hybrid funds mm. or go into asset Best allocation of both funds. Worlds in one. Because the fund manager will do it for you. You've given them mm. a mandate mm. that I don't want to be above 50. So what happens? The moment you go above 50, he'll bring it down. And without any tax implication. Mm. Because you pay tax only when you do a transaction. When the fund manager is doing it, you are paying nothing. All right, let's see what questions uh, the employees here at Majesco have on the topic of creating a lucrative portfolio. I'll be calling out a few names. The first name I'll call out is Sandeep Pareshi, if you could get up. Uh, before two years, uh, I had purchased a home as an investment option. I keep on hearing these things uh, unless and until you have your investments in mutual funds. The returns that you would probably get from the property investment would not be... Uh, that much as compared to the investment that you would be doing in the mutual fund. So, is it a better option to sell off the property and uh, do the investment in uh, mutual funds? If you are comfortable, my suggestion that you can think about selling it and invest the money because you will have to repay the loan also. What I understand, there, there will be some outstanding loan, so you will have to pay that. And more important, because the tax benefit under section 24B, which was on the uh, let out property was unlimited. On the self-occupied earlier, you could claim 2 lakh rupees loss and on let out property, there was no limit. Now put together, you can claim only the loss of rupees 2 lakh in one financial year. So considering that also, it is not a no more lucrative option for investment. So saying these all things, my suggestion that you should, you can think about uh, selling that property and invest in equity mutual funds if your time horizon is longer. All right, a very uh, interesting discussion panning out on how to create a portfolio, how to create a lucrative portfolio. But uh, we'll need to take a very short break. When we return, the floor will be open to the employees here at Majesco to ask any questions that they have to our financial planning experts. And remember, you can stay updated with us on our website, nscfinviz.com, and of course, our social media handles on Facebook and Twitter, at NSC Finviz. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to NSC Finvest Season 6, powered by CNBC TV18. We have been discussing, well, investing in yourself, your path to prosperity. And, of course, the topic of this episode is creating a lucrative portfolio. The floor is now open to the employees here at Majesco to ask any questions that they have to our financial planning experts. So let's see a show of hands. The gentleman in the white shirt. My uh, question is regarding, like, uh, contingency fund. General theory says that we should park that fund in debt funds. But comparing the debt funds return and uh, locking up three years to get the long-term uh, capital gain, is it good to have that fund in a large cap fund instead of debt funds? When it comes to mutual fund, there are funds like ultra short-term fund, low duration fund. Okay, You should be looking at these funds. Okay, Because the, the importance of contingency fund is that it should be available whenever there is a financial emergency. Don't go for any fund which requires a long-term commitment. And if you look at liquid fund, for example, or, or uh, low-duration fund, they typically give you one and a half, two percent more than what you get from a saving bank account. Thank you so much for asking a question. The gentleman here. The problem with some of the fund managers is that they don't stick to the label. So how do you keep track of this and how do you check this? SEBI has now come out with rules for, you know, they've recategorized and rationalized the fund. The top 100 companies in terms of market cap will be large cap. The next 150 will be mid cap and 251 onwards will be small cap. So if a fund says I have a large cap, that fund cannot go beyond those 100 stocks now. If a fund says I'm launching a mid cap fund, it has to be between 101 to 250. And if a fund says I'm launching a small cap fund, it has to be 251 onwards. So for each asset classes, the funds have been categorized now, very clear definition. So all that confusion which you must have seen earlier cannot happen now. All right. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, the lady in the back. In mutual fund, we always listen in long term, we will get good return. So hmm. can we quantify that? That means after how many years I can expect at least 20% of return if I am selecting good funds? If suppose you are investing for long term, for retirement, where you have 20 years, 25 years, then you invest most of your money in equity mutual funds. In that case, if your time horizon is very long, see more than 10 years, you can expect around 15% average return from your equity mutual fund scheme. Does not mean that you will get 15% year on year. Sometime it may be negative also, but sometime it may be as high as 50-60%. Now coming to your short term or medium term goals, if you are investing for contingency, there you should not look at returns. There the most important is liquidity and safety of your money. So there if you expect 6-7% returns, but liquidity is high, and risk is less. So that is also choice is available. So when you want to invest for say three months, six months, so you have liquid fund, money market fund. If you want to invest for a time horizon of one year, for example, one year or little more than that. So we have equity saving funds where a little portion goes in equity and rest is allocated in debt. If you want to invest say up to five years, two years to five years, we have hybrid fund where the allocation in equity and debt is decided by the fund manager. We have those balance advantage funds or we have uh, equity and debt funds. So it's not the fund that how much time you have to keep, means it's not a common or standard rule. You have to decide that what is your goal and according to goal that you have to choose the right fund for you. All right. Okay. I hope we've answered your question. One last question. Let's take it from the ladies. Anyone else? All right. The lady in the third row. What about gold investments in ETF and gold commodity? We haven't okay. covered that as far as asset allocation was concerned. The point is there are two aspects to it. One is that all of us have gold at home, but generally we don't consider that as a part of the portfolio. We say this is not to be touched. Second thing is if you talk about in terms of asset allocation, generally the thumb rule is that maybe 5 to 10%. But my, my view is that the goal that we already have, the moment you make it a part of portfolio, maybe it's already much more than that. Second thing is that historically, if you see, the gold returns have been really subdued. I mean, it's not really, it gives you a fantastic return over a period of time. I think if you have to look at gold, to me, I think the best option today would be look at gold sovereign bonds. I think they are the best. You know, one of the problem with the gold has always been that we always felt that this is one asset class, which apart from appreciation, if at all it happens, it generate, does not generate any income for me. And this gold sovereign bond gives you interest on a half yearly basis. Of course, it's taxable. It gives you around 2.5%. And the capital gain that you make after eight years is also tax-free. So I think uh, in terms of, you know, if you're looking at purely as an investment, uh, rather than looking at ETF and all, I think gold sovereign bond is something which you should be looking at. But obviously, the bigger question for you is, 
whether at all you should be investing in gold. It depends on, again, your goals. If you're investing for longer period or maybe another for five or 10 years, then I don't see much uh, you know, benefit from gold coming in your portfolio. You know, most of the time, I think when you ask the question, last one year returns in gold has been, uh, have been good. But you know, it's not the gold has appreciated, it's the dollar appreciated. Because we import gold, we don't mine gold in India now. So when the dollar price goes up, the gold becomes costlier. So the gold, you cannot expect very good returns just to have the portfolio. Some 5-10% is okay, which he explained you that already you have at home. So that is why you don't need to think much about uh, investment in gold. Better if you do not have equity, increase your exposure in that. Right. Gold looks great as jewelry, but as an investment, have a, just a limited amount. That's, that's, that's the message here. Thank you so much for asking your question. It's been a wonderful exchange of ideas, of course, on the topic of creating a lucrative portfolio. Lots of questions asked and lots of questions answered. I'd like to thank our panelists for, for, for helping people understand the concepts behind personal finance and wealth creation. And of course, the employees here at Majesco for asking their questions. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. Remember, you can stay updated with us on our website nsefinvis.com and of course our social media handles on Facebook and Twitter at nsefinvis. Keep watching CNBC TV18. Through this event I got to know that what kind of investments I should be doing in future maybe percentage wise like how much percentage I should invest in equity how much percentage I should invest in um, you know mutual funds how much I should be investing in a uh, fixed deposit commodities etc so it was a good takeaway overall from this uh, uh, from this session the session was very helpful very knowledgeable it really gave us lots of knowledge one of the one of the area which I was concerned mainly was equity so I always heard that equity is a risky business how it will impact your portfolio and your goals so somewhere I was clear today that equity, if kept for long term, will be really beneficial. That is a takeaway from me that, you know, you need to be very patient enough. It cannot, you, you can't get returns in a day or two, a month or so. So definitely returns are going to be good, but you need to have good advisor around you who can give you good advice and also being patient and just go with the flow. Innovate. Enable.